Okay, so we've now seen the basic suffix array query, and we've seen that it takes big O of n times log m time, which is a bit worse than the suffix tree. So let's see if we can't come up with at least one idea for how to make it faster. And actually in the next two videos, we're gonna see two different ideas, and we're gonna start with the simpler one, but the simple one uh, introduces an important concept for us, which is the longest common prefix. Okay, so the first question we wanna ask is, can we somehow, over the course of doing this binary search, take some of the information that we've learned so far in the binary search and use it to help us do less work, to help us skip work in future iterations of the binary search? Specifically, can we take information about common prefixes that we have observed between the query and the suffixes and roll that information forward so that we can skip some future work. And we can, so let me show you how. So let's start this same uh, query process over again from the first step, which is, and, and by the way, I now have to switch to a new example because I need the example to be pretty repetitive to highlight the, the point that I wanna make here. So here's a nice repetitive example. And I've got my text and I've got my pattern. And of course, the first step as usual is that I'm just going to do a lexicographical comparison between my query, my pattern, and the pivot suffix, the suffix that's in the middle of the remaining interval, so the suffix that's in the middle of the whole array in this case. Okay, so I'm gonna proceed as usual doing my lexicographical character by character comparison, starting at the left and moving to the right. I'll see a match here, A matches A, B matches B, so those first two will be matches, and then, oops, I'll see a mismatch here because that A in the query is less than the B in the pivot, the pivot suffix, okay? Again, this is the pivot suffix, right? The blue suffix, this is the blue suffix. So I just compared my query to this and I found that the query is less than this, but I also found along the way that the query and this pivot have a common prefix of AB, right? They both start with AB. So they have a common prefix of length two, in other words, the length of their common prefix, or now I'm gonna to switch to using the abbreviation, LCP is two. And we'll use this abbreviation again and again. So I'll, I'm defining it here. LCP means length of common prefix. In this example, the query string and the pivot have an LCP of two. Okay, so let's just remember that. The query and that pivot, the blue one, have an LCP of two. Now let's keep going with our usual procedure. The fact that the pattern, the query was less than the pivot means that when we recurse, we should recurse to the left. So we recurse to the left, we pick our new pivot, which is in the middle of the left half, and we do it again. We do character comparisons to compare the query against the now the red pivot. Right, so we're gonna lexicographically compare. This time we're gonna see match, 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 mismatch with the query character being greater than the character in the pivot, okay? So we learned that the query is greater than the red pivot, so we're gonna, we know we're gonna recurse to the right next, but we learned something else, which is that the query and the red pivot have a common prefix of length four, right? A common prefix of ABAB, -A -B. in other words, the LCP is four. Okay, so the LCP between the query and the red pivot is four. Okay, so far we're just, we just did the exact same things we did in the, in the usual algorithm, the usual binary search algorithm, but we're gonna remember these two LCPs because in the next step, we can actually use them. Okay, so here's the next step. We're now looking at this piece of the suffix array. We're gonna compare our query against this pivot. I'll call it plum, the plum pivot, plum, purple. Uh, we're com comparing the query to the plum colored pivot. And before we even look at that pivot, before I even show you what suffix is there, let's just remember a few facts that we've already learned from the last two rounds, okay? We learned that the length of the common prefix, the LCP between the pivot and this suffix was two. And we learned that the length of the common prefix between the query and the red pivot, this suffix, was four. Okay, so that tells us something about what's going on with the plum colored pivot, even if we don't look at that pivot, just using these facts, combining these facts, right? Let's combine the fact that our LCP with the red pivot is four, our LCP with the blue pivot is two, and then of course this plum pivot in the middle is lexicographically between the red and the blue, right? 
because of where it is in the suffix array. We know that the red one is less than it, and it's less than the blue one. It's in the middle, lexicographically. But we know, therefore, that it must also start with AB, right? If our pattern has a common prefix with the blue one of length 2, and our pattern has a common prefix of the red one of length 4, then that bit that's in common with both of them, which we get by taking the minimum of 4 and 2, or 2, that bit must also be the same as the query. In other words, the query and the, bl and the plum pivot have at least the prefix AB in common. Okay, so even without looking at that plum pivot, we know that the length of the common prefix between our query and that pivot is at least 2. It might be greater than 2, but it's at least 2. Right, so that's what we know, just based on what we've learned so far. So this doesn't prevent us from having to do character comparisons, but it means we get to skip two of them. Right? The first two character comparisons, we're not even going to do them. Right? So when we go to compare the query to the plum pivot, we're going to go skip, skip, skip the first two. We already know that they're both A and B, so we can skip them. Then we continue from that point. Right? So we still have to look at this third position and say, okay, well, that's a match, that's a match, that's a match. And then we find that the query is less than the pivot. Okay? And furthermore, we now know that the LCP between the query and this new, this new pivot, the plum colored one, is 5. So we can remember that information now. Now, because the query was less than this pivot, we have to recurse to the left. That means we're going to go to the last of all the steps, which is the one where we have to compare to that pivot. And again, we know something about the relationship between the query and this last pivot, the dark blue pivot, because of what we learned in previous rounds. Let's again put the information that we learned all together, right? We learned earlier that the LCP between the query and the red pivot is 4, and we learned that the LCP between the query and the plum colored pivot is 5. So again, the fact that this dark blue pivot is in between the two, lexicographically, the red and the plum, means that the query's LCP with the dark blue pivot must be at least the minimum of the two, which is 4. Okay, so the, uh, in other words, the dark blue pivot has to start with ABAB. That's just it's just a fact. Uh, based on everything we've learned so far, we know the dark blue pivot must start with ABAB. And so we can skip those first four character comparisons, just like we skipped the two character comparisons before. And so we do skip, 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 and then we learn in this case that the query is less than the dark blue pivot, and that actually is where our journey ends, because now we know that the, there is no um, suffix that has our query as a prefix, so we would answer the query no in this case. Okay, but we were able to skip, in this case, four character comparisons. And in general, if we have information about the LCP between the query and some suffix to the left, as well as some information about the LCP between the query and some suffix to the right, we can combine those two, we can take the minimum of the two, and that tells us a number of character comparisons that we can skip. If we do this skipping, obviously when we were doing the naive algorithm, as we initially discussed, we weren't doing any skipping. So I can contrast the two pretty easily and visually by just showing you what we were doing before versus what we're doing now in each of the lexicographical comparisons. So in the comparison of the query to the first pivot, which was colored blue, we did the same work in both cases. right? We, we actually just went ahead and did the character comparisons until the first mismatch found that the query was less than, so we recursed to the left. Then, same thing for the comparison to this red pivot. Right, we just compared characters of the query to the red pivot until we found a mismatch, learned that we should recurse to the right. Then, in the case of the naive algorithm, we rematched these first two characters of, of the query to the what was then the plum-colored pivot. But in this uh, a scenario where we took advantage of the previous information that we learned about LCPs, we were able to skip the first two, and then in this last step we were able to skip the first four. So just this simple trick of keeping track of some previous LCP information that we learned in previous iterations of the binary search helps us skip some of the work that we need to do in subsequent iterations. So we're going to take this idea and extend it to sort of the maximum possible skipping in the next video that we're going to have to augment this technique
by using not just the LCPs that we learn along the way, but also some pre-computed common prefixes between suffixes.